now to intoxicate you. I'm here now to deal with your hurts, deal with your wounds, deal with your disappointments. I'm not offering you a counterfeit. The real thing is here. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Listen to what she says. You've got to hear this. Song of Solomon, chapter 1, verse 2. Let him kiss me for the kisses of his mouth. It's better. It's better than wine. <laughs> Watch this. The word worship in the Greek, the Greek word is pros kineo. Pros means towards. Kineo means kisses. When you worship God, you kiss God. She's not dealing with her kissing him, though. She's dealing with him kissing her. So y'all don't understand. God's a kisser. <laughs> and I know you've never seen him like this, but walk with me. If you, if you got your scuba gear, change it to your submarine. Walk with me. When you wake up in the morning, he kisses you with the sunlight. breeze that comes into your ears when 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 sometimes you went to some place and something you really wanted and it just happens to be on sale <laughs> just happens coincidence no christ incidents and so <laughs> he's a lover He's a lover. And then you see, when you start encountering real love, uh, you see, the first man that got drunk in the Bible, you know the first thing he did? It was Noah. You know the first thing he did? He got naked. <laughs> Y'all don't want me to talk about this. <laughs> Do you know why a lot of you have armor on? You've never gotten drunk with God's love. Because the love of God will cause you to peel your armor off and become naked and exposed to God in a confidence that he will not hurt me. That intoxicating power of the alcohol made him take his clothes off. It made him lose all inhibitions. And that's what happens in the presence of the Lord. When you see some of you are looking around, you're watching people lift your, their hands, you watch people talking, and these folk are crazy, they on something. Come on, we did the same things. We walked in the first time we ever walked in a church. Come on. I got some people who are in church now, but the first time you ever walked in, you thought, okay, where's the door? Because <laughs> these folk are, woo, where's the coats? <laughs> if you've ever been around people who are drunk, they are annoying. They're crazy and they're annoying. If you get drunk with them, they're the best group going. <laughs> you get drunk on the spirit of God, honey. And I you, can I tell you something about when I can tell you something when somebody's drunk. But there's, some, there's something about when somebody gets drunk. There's stuff you just don't notice anymore. When somebody's drunk, you don't really notice color. You know why we have such trouble with prejudice? Folk aren't drunk enough on God's love. You get drunk enough on God's love, you don't know what's a male, female, you don't know what's black, white, Hispanic. You know, it just doesn't matter. It doesn't, doesn't matter. Now, y'all gotta help me out here. There is a tradition that we do uh, where we call a toast. And we need to do that today. Mm -hmm. you, know the, you know the tradition especially at weddings or something, we all lift our glass, and the best man or someone pronounces a toast. And, then, and at the end of that, people yell, I'll drink to that. <laughs> it's a reason to drink. Huh? 
and 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 I, I want to I want to does anybody is anybody you know see what it's all it's one thing <laughs> it's one thing to go somewhere and just drink it's fun when you can drink with others I just need some drinking buddies I got any drinking buddies in the house yeah. I need I just just all right I'm gonna propose a toast everybody just lift your spiritual hands you got your glass in your and and when I after I give my toast everybody yells I'll drink to that you ready for the toast God is good. Now, come on, open up your mouth and give God some. Somebody drink to that. Somebody drink to that. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, you can't get drunk with your mouth closed. You can't get drunk with your mouth closed. Some of you are clapping your hands, but you got your mouth closed. You can't get drunk with your mouth closed. Open your mouth. Y'all are liberty. You can sit, stand. That's up to you. I, I just need some help with this pastor. I'm going to get pastor to come in just a moment and give us a toast. It, it's just an excuse to get drunk. <laughs> See, you don't understand. When the, when the Bible says, when the Bible says that you don't put new wine into old wineskins. Hmm. See, a wineskin was made out of animal skin in that day and age. And, and what happened is over time, it would lose its elasticity. And new wine needs room to expand because it's, it breathes. He says, so you don't put new wine into old wineskins. So when God wants to put his new wine into you, he's going to make you flexible. For blessed are the flexible, for they shall not be bent out of shape. Because God's going to breathe through you. Hmm. See, some of y'all are too rigid. You're too, too stiff. That spiritual rigor mortis. Like a statue. I want God to touch you, but can't let down my image. I want nobody to misconstrue and look at me in some strange way. Hmm. But you know what? When you get to the point where you just don't care. <laughs> oh, <geez. Whew. laughs> uh, I, I, and so these things when you start understanding these things are cheap imitations and that's why we have such problems in the world because everybody's going after the Im imitation everybody's going after the counterfeit but you got to realize to have an imitation to have a counterfeit you first must have a real thing you can't have an imitation unless there's first a real thing Hallelujah. And that's why God said, I want to know is there anybody th that will toast my goodness? <laughs> is there anybody that will drink in my love and allow me to deal with their mind and their emotions? Who will peel off their defenses because you're ready now for me to deal with your hurts and your wounds and you're not trying to fake it till you make it. You're, you're willing now to be real. You're willing to take the mask off because what's happened to so many of you is you got such a mask on. You don't know how to get real. You don't, you don't even know how to cry anymore. You sucked it in so long. You pulled it back so much calling yourself a man. A man deals with his emotions. A man deals with his real hurts. A, a man deals with his issues. He just doesn't try to suck it back and just push it in the corner. You got to open up and know when you're done, you're still a man. Because, because, because it's the love of God that gives me the power to deal. Somebody lift your hands and open up your mouth. Pastor's coming to give us a toast. I want to present a toast. God's love is better than wine. Hallelujah. Let's give him praise. Hallelujah. I'll drink to that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Sister Ballesteros coming. She's coming to give us a toast. I would say that I am here today because God kept me. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody drink to that. 
Some, hey, where's my drinking buddies? Elder Davis, give us a toast. Let's give a praise to God for this new wine that we have received by his power. Hallelujah. Hey, do I have anybody that open up their mouth? Come on, you, you, you sitting there clapping with your hands and your mouth closed. You got to open your mouth, honey, to get drunk on this thing. Woo! We are not drunk as you suppose, but this is that. Can you stand a little more? Oh, Jesus. Watch this, watch this. God says that when you are drunk, your vision is altered. You see things differently. Do you know why some of you are having a hard time seeing things God's way? You're not drunk. <sighs> See, when you're drunk on God's love, the world looks different. I wonder if there's anybody in this house that can honestly testify that when you got the Holy Ghost, the grass seemed greener. The, 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 the trees seemed brighter. The, the, just altered altered <laughs> I, I'm telling you th th there's something about the intoxicating power of God's love that just alters your personality that's what alcohol does that's what drugs does it alters your that's what it means to alter moods it alters your personality what's not normally your personality it brings you into an arena and causes you to perform something you would not normally do but how many know we're stepping out of the norm into the supernatural? <laughs> we're going from the natural to the supernatural. And this is why the woman says, when he kisses me, <laughs> his mouth is intoxicating. <laughs> There's something about God that he can love you like nobody else can love you. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're at liberty. You can sit, you can stand, you're at liberty. But there's something about God. Anybody can hug your physical body. Even a child can wrap their arms around your body. But only God can hug your soul. Only God can come inside and with one arm grab your emotions and with the other divine arm grab your intellect. Do you know what it's like when your intellect and your emotions are not agreeing? When your mind and your heart are going two separate ways? Your mind says do this, but your heart says do that. Only God can reconcile the mind and the heart in a divine embrace and say, peace, be still. How can you deal with the fact that you were molested? <laughs> How do you deal with the vulnerability and the nastiness that crawls now through your mind and your body that makes you feel like you want to take a bath and scrub, but no matter how hard you scrub, you can't get the feeling off of you. How do you deal with someone that just lied on you that was claiming to be your best friend? How, how do you handle getting fired from a job when it was not your fault? How do you deal with even leadership in the church? Something happened and they blamed you and it wasn't your fault. How do you handle this? You handle it by the intoxicating power of God's love because when you start to drink Oh. Huh. 
I'm not talking to you out of textbook knowledge. I'm talking to you out of experience because when your mind feel like it's getting ready to snap, that, that's why folk naturally reach for a bottle and, and before you know it, their problems seem to be gone, but only momentary because when they wake up, they got bigger problems. But this love I'm talking about, I can drink in the morning and drink in the noonday, drink in the evening, drink when the next day, there is no hangover. There is... Mm, Oh, glory. That's how you can handle it. How can you handle all this? It's through intoxication. How do you handle the mess that sometimes arises up in your head and makes you feel like you're insane? I wish I had some honest folk in this house. There's sometimes you just feel like you could almost strangle somebody. There's sometimes you feel like you're going to slap somebody. There's sometimes you could just feel like you could just do somebody bodily harm because just life, just life, just the stuff of life. How do you calm down? How do you come back to yourself? I want to tell you how it's when you're drinking God's love that's why the songwriter said when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that is done for me my soul somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah I, I, I just got to deal with a few more things. I, I, I talked just a moment about how she says when, 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 when he kisses me. But, 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 but hold on, hold on. He he's talks about her. Look, look at chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 10. How fair is thy love, my sister, my spouse. How much better is thy love. Than, uh, she, he, in fact, in chapter 7, he talks about the, the, the wine... Uh, the way she kisses it. <laughs> Y'all really don't want me to interpret this. <laughs> chapter 4, verse 9. Uh, uh, excuse me, chapter 7, verse 9. It's chapter 7 of the Song of Solomon, verse 9. And the roof, she, he's talking to her. And the roof of thy mouth is like the best wine for my beloved that goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. He said, you kiss so good that you make the dead talk. Oh! You see, you don't understand. You got a lover on your hands. God's a lover. God's a lover. And and, and what happens to so many of you is you're frigid. You're ooh, Jesus. You're you're you're, 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 you're cold. You're indifferent lovers. You you just God wants to come touch you, and you just you brought a friend today. God, don't touch me today. I got a friend. I brought someone to church. Don't don't. They're gonna think I'm crazy. And so here God comes touch you. Go hey oh glow. No Jesus. No. No Lord. No. Oh no. He, he, he's glad that you brought your friend, but where's your kisses? Where your love? It's supposed to be better than wine. And so that's what the Greek word for, for worship means to kiss. Do you understand that when you worship God, you kiss God? It literally means to throw kisses to God, to throw your affection to God. That when you worship, you have to expose. Praise is powerful. And everybody loves praise. Folk jump and shout and sweat. And that's wonderful. And a lot of y'all, it's nothing more than a Jane Fonda workout. Just lose weight while you praise. But that's not the point. The, the thing is, when you step beyond the praise and you move to the worship. Worship now is when it gets real powerful. Worship is when you start unveiling your soul and you, you start embracing God. You tell God, whether I feel you or not, I'm going to kiss you. Whether you're hugging me, I'm going to hug you. I'm going to hug you. Do you know how to hug God when it feels like he's not hugging you? Do you know how to open up your mouth and worship God when you don't even feel God? Don't know where God is. Don't know what God is doing. But yet I will bless the Lord at all times. He said, what I'm looking for is some, for somebody to engage in this intoxicating power of my love. 
It is my love that when you become intoxicated with my love, uh, did you notice a drunk person just don't care? They, get, they just don't care. They don't care. They're just going to do whatever the impulses are making them do. Whatever is they feel, that's what they're going to do. If they throw up, they throw up. They don't care. And do you understand that when you get intoxicated with God's love, there's some stuff you're going to have to throw up. There's some stuff that's inside of you that God's going to cause you to throw up. I don't mean naturally, friend. I mean by your words. you got to get stuff out of you. Stuff you've been hiding. Stuff you've been locking up in your closet. Stuff that's been hurting you. Stuff that you haven't been talking to nobody about. Stuff that gives you nightmares. Stuff that you made an agreement with God and with your own mind. I don't go there. You don't go there. We shut the door. We leave the thing behind the closed door. But when you get intoxicated with God, that thing's got to get thrown up. That thing's coming out. God's going to deal with that. God's going to deal with your hurt. God's going to deal with your feelings as a child. God's going to deal with your loneliness. God's going to deal with your anger with your parents. The true party started in the church. Can't nobody party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. The true party's always been in the church. The true party started in the house of God. The true party started with the folk that have learned how to drink God's love in and walk out and intoxicate others and share with others what they have found. That when you find something so rich and so sweet and so amen overpowering to your spirit, you get to the place, my friend, where you start, amen, you go beyond just social sipping, you go beyond social drinking, and when you become an alcoholic, you start drinking all by yourself. You hear me now? That's why David said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. That's wonderful. That's social drinking. But then David said, I will bless the Lord at all. You start becoming an alcoholic. You will drink by yourself. You will drink in your bedroom. You will drink in your car. You will drink at your workplace. You will drink at your school. We need some spiritual alcoholics. Touch somebody, say, quit acting cute and get drunk. Yeah. I know you wore your Sunday best. I know you're looking fine. I know you got this on and got that on. I know, but listen, and I know you got your image to protect, honey, but it's time now to get drunk. God wants on the inside. God wants on the inside. Don't you know that alcohol is like a Novocaine? It's a painkiller. That's why even at first, when they first started trying to operate, alcohol was an ingredient in that because they noticed it killed the pain. And don't you know why certain things have not been removed from you yet? It's too painful. But when you get drunk on God's love, God can begin to go in and reach and pull that thing that's so painful out of you. That memory, that thing that you don't want to deal with. You hear me now. I'm preaching to somebody's inner man. I'm not just trying to get you happy. I'm going on the inside. I'm going on the inside to where only God can go. Because there's some of you, you're struggling. You're struggling with what's going on in your head. Some of you don't even realize why you do what you do. But the east, what happened in your life, it was like a rock thrown in a pond. And whatever happened disappeared underneath the palm, but the ripples of it continue in your present in all directions affecting your life. You don't even remember what the rock looked like, but you're still dealing with the ripples. Some of you can't even exactly point to something. All you know is I'm afraid to love. I'm afraid to open up. I'm not good enough for this. I always make the wrong choices and the wrong decisions. I always seem to head down the wrong paths. I want to do right. I try. But I always end up falling flat on my face. And you know what? I'm at the point now where I don't care. Because it just seems the more I try, the worse it gets. Now you understand Jesus saying when he said, Come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. I know you're burdened with stuff you cannot fix. And he said, and I will give you rest. You've been trying to work it out all by yourself for so long. You've been trying to fine tune it and work out the details of it. You've been trying to think it through, rationalize it. You've been trying to fix it all yourself. But God said, if you'll take off your Superman cape today and admit you're Clark Kent, I can help you. 
as long as you keep that Superman cape on and act like you're so strong and your shoulders are so broad and ain't nothing penetrates you, you know, you bullets just bounce off your chest and this stuff didn't bother you as water off a duck's back and all the other sayings you got put down the pike. God said, if you just get real and admit some of this stuff bothered you, if you just get honest, if you just get drunk with my love, this stuff will start flowing to the surface and stuff will start coming out of you. Some of you be surprised the stuff that came out of your mouth. In fact, in fact, some of you actually know it and that's why you're afraid. You're trying to hold on to the controls. You don't want it to come out. You're afraid because if I let it loose, I don't know if I can regain it. I'm I go crazy and I don't know if I can regain control of it. I don't know if I can pull it back in and, and function. So I, the best thing to do is just keep it under taps. It's the best thing is just to hold it in. But God said, he told me to tell you, many of you are like a pressure cooker. You, the, the pressure is building. The pressure is building, but you won't release the steam valves. The steam valves are your tears. You hear me now. You know what you can, how the pressure cooker stops from exploding? You release the steam valves. You need to cry. You need to cry. Who oh, cries for babies? No, 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 man. It takes a man to cry. It takes a woman to cry. You hear me? God made tears. God made tears. One person said tears are a language that only God can understand. Hand. Every tear that comes from your eye, God knows the reason. Every teardrop that falls from your eyes are like diamonds that come down, little diamonds that fall, God knows. David said, collect my tears in a vial. Collect them in a bottle, oh God. God has your tears collected. He knows why you're crying. He knows why you're hurting. He knows what's bleeding on the inside. And now is coming the intoxicating love of God to help numb the pain while the surgery and the scalpel of the word of God comes to cut that thing out and deal with you that cancer that's been eating you up the bitterness that's been tearing you apart some of you you're waking up in the morning and you're trying to get this thing out of your head but you keep thinking about this person you keep thinking about what they did keep thinking about what they said keep thinking about how what they how they acted and you, you keep replaying it like a movie in your head. And you're trying to stop it. But it seems like it just flips on without any kind of control. All of a sudden you're doing your dishes. All of a sudden you're driving in your car. And there's that movie again playing in your head. And the feelings arise of the anger of how you just like to slap that person. You like just to hurt them. You just, you know you shouldn't. You know you shouldn't feel like this. But man, it just feels justified and actually feels good. It, you hear me? It feels good. It feels good. Something about it just feels good, and yet you know it's not right, but man, it feels good because you're trying to release this thing, and it's oozing out of you. And God said, now, now I'll help you to deal with it. Now if you'll drink me in, I'll help you to deal with this pain. I'll help you to deal with that husband that abused you. I'll help you to deal with that father that molested you and raped you. I'll help you to deal with that boyfriend and that girlfriend. I'll help you to deal with that teacher. You hear me, you hear me, you hear me. I'll help you to deal with what you could not handle yourself the power comes from your dependency it's when you admit you cannot do it it's when you admit it's too strong that's why a person initially reaches for a bottle they're saying life is too hard i can't handle it alone i need some help and god said it's when you do that it's when you admit i'm not strong enough i'm not strong enough you know why some of you struggle? You've always been the strong one in your family. Everybody always comes and leans on you. Someone dies in the family, you handle everything. Problems in the family, you're the peacemaker, and you work out the details. Some of you are the children, and you actually are actually the ones that are heads of the family, even though there's parents. You act like the peacemaker between father and brother, and, and you so used to being the strong one, that now you don't know how to be weak. You don't realize that what Paul said, when I am weak, then, then I am strong. When I am emptied out of my own strength, now I have room to take on divine strength. And now I operate on divine strength and not on human strength. That's why now I'm strong when I am weak. And so God said, if I can get you to get real in this house. Touch someone, tell them charades is over. I know you're used to acting a certain way. I know you're used to conducting yourself a certain way. I know you're angry. 
And you feel justified because you don't know what they did to me. You don't know how they pierced me. You don't understand. Much of our anger comes from our hurt. Much of the reason why we're furious and why we sit there looking like we've been baptized in lemon juice, face just twisted like a mule that's been chewing on some briars. The reason, the reason why we look like we slept all night long in a post hole ditch. Because you don't know how folk mess with me. You don't know what happened in my heart. And I can't afford that again. Another blow like that and I'll die. I'll emotionally, I'll just crumble. So the easiest way to do it is just, just everybody keep your space. But it just, and I want you to know me. Because if you know me, you might hurt me. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit to you, but don't, don't get too deep in my business. I'm, why are you so nosy? Because it's that kind of nosiness that hurt me. You might not mean any harm, and I might even know you don't mean any harm, but you understand I can't take any chances. I, I, just, I just can't take any more chances. God said, I'm ready now to pour into you a love that will numb your pain on the inside and disinfect your wound on the outside. That will cause you now vision to be changed the way you've been looking at things is going to get altered and I'm getting ready now to heal you on the inside for my love is better than wine you don't have to worry about a hangover tomorrow you don't have to worry about hugging to the toilet and throwing up you don't have to worry about anybody talking too loud and you're don't, don't you shh. you won't have to worry about any of those kinds of things when this is over but you will find out that I'm coming for the little boy that's in the man. And I'm coming for the little girl that's in the woman. The woman's been protecting that little girl so strong, the man's been hiding that little boy behind him because he doesn't want to let him out. He doesn't want to deal. He doesn't want to deal. He doesn't want to deal. But God said, I'm coming for the little boy. I'm coming to pick him up. I'm coming to let him know it's all right. It's all right. And God said, some of you, some of you, you hurt yourself. You hurt yourself. You, you did some foolish things. <laughs> you, you hurt somebody. You, you let people down. They were relying on you and you failed. The guilt and the condemnation that sits on your head like tons, tons. Because <laughs> you can hardly breathe. It just, it just sits on you so. God said, even that I am coming after to lift the guilt and the shame off of you and to let my love bring you into a joy and into a peace. Even that, God said, I will wait wipe away your shame and I will turn your, sh your shame into fame. Hallelujah. Somebody just lift your hands to God in this house. Somebody open up your mouth to God in this house. Come on, friends, drink, drink. You can't drink with your mouth closed, friend. Drink. You don't even know what to say. Just say, Lord, heal me, touch me. I need you, I love you. Just, just talk to him. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. 
Walk your son, Pastor, Pastor Bell, walk your son up. The power of God's getting me to deal here today. Pastor, I want you to come to just lift your hands to the Lord, man of God. And you are a man of God. You are a man of God. You are a man of God. You are. You are. You are. You say, no, no, I'm striving to be. No, 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 no. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you say, well, I, wait a minute, I got to correct some stuff. No, 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 no. You are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> you see, your son's your son. <laughs> if he messes up, still your son. Lies, still your son. Steals, still your son. <laughs> Never changes from being your son. Might not like what he did, but he's still your son. So the Lord says to you, you're still mine. You're mine. You're mine. You're mine. You're mine. <laughs> Pastor, I need you to get the oil. Man of God, you, you, you come through a lot. This year has really been something for you. You've come through a lot. You've grown. You're not the same person I knew a few years ago. You've grown. You've changed. You've matured in God. <laughs> thank God for it. You need to clap your hands and thank God for that. You need to thank God for that. You thank God for that. You thank God for that. You know, we, 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 we talk a lot when folk mess up, but we get real quiet when they do well. It's really amazing, but that's sometimes what we do. We, we real, you know, they mess up. We, beep, 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 all around like wildfire. Did you hear what he did? Did you hear what she said? You know, they do something good, and they, well, well, you know, yeah. Yeah. whatever. <laughs> we need to acknowledge the good. Yes. 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 Jesus was masterful of that. Jesus would look at the Pharisees, say, you hypocrites, you vipers, poison snakes, he called them. Then turn around and look at Nathaniel and say, behold, an Israelite in whom there was no guile. I get nervous with folk who got all these gifts and all you see is wrong stuff. All you see is oh, fornication, adultery, and what folk do wrong. You never see anything good. Jesus sees the good, too. And the thing, Pastor, I want you to get oil. Because the thing the Lord told me is you've passed some exams in the Lord. It's graduation time. Pastor, I want you to anoint him with oil. You're going to the another, you're going to the next level, brother. Oh, somebody needs to thank God in this house. Somebody needs to give God some praise in this house. Now listen, friends. Don't stop praising him. You got a right to praise him, sir. You got a right to praise him. You don't need to stop. Come on, where's his wife? Come on, come on. His wife, come on, come on. Come on, dance with him. Come on. Hey, you don't know the tears. You don't know the times they, that the devil thought they had him, right? Where? You can't understand my praise till you know my pain. The nights where you even wondered whether the marriage was even going to continue. The nights where you wondered whether they were going to be still saved or not saved. And now to hear God say they've graduated. Hey, excuse me while I dance. Excuse me while I shout. Because I've already cried. I've already laid down and worried. So excuse me now if I'm excited.
My sister that's sitting down there in the black. Yes, honey, come on. I heard God calling you. You, you, this couple right here, honey, y'all just walk in the back and take your time and shout and dance, run around. Don't y'all stop. If I see you stop, I'm liable to call you again. I just heard the Lord say these words to you. <laughs> he said, you're not going to die. <laughs> oh, <Jesus>. <laughs> Feels like it. <laughs> Feels like you're going to die. Feels like it. But God said he's here for you today. This service has been designed particularly for you today. God said he's come to heal you. This stuff is too heavy, man. It, it's too heavy. It's just, it's just. Whew. I'm only feeling a portion of it, and I'm ready to cry. It, it's just, it's just too heavy. It'll drive you insane. It'll make your mind snap. God says He's come to lift this off of you. He's come to do what you cannot do yourself. Come on, sweetie. Just lay your hands right there on her chest. I need a few more praying sisters. I need a few more praying sisters. Come on, I need some praying sisters. Just a few. Just a few praying sisters.